Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. Three-fourths of a 20-foot by 40-foot rectangular floor has tiles at $2 per square foot. One-fourth of the floor has tiles at $3 per square foot. What is the total cost of the floor? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's take a look at the question one more time before we see the answer. So it's important to note that we are dealing with a rectangular floor, okay? And the dimensions of this floor is 20 foot by 40 foot. All right, so we have these tiles, of course, are gonna be on this floor and three fourths of this 20 foot by 40 foot floor has tiles, or we're gonna put down tiles that are $2 per square foot, right? So imagine you're doing this project and you wanna you know, uh, put tiles on this 20 foot by 40 foot rectangular floor and three fourths of this floor will be at $2 per square foot. Now kind of almost giving you a little bit of guidance on how to solve this problem. And one fourth of this floor is going to be um, a tiled with tiles at $3 per square foot. Okay, so we want to know the total cost to do this project. So that is the question. And let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is $1,800. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that the next time they do projects at their house and they wanna know exactly how much it's going to cost, just call you up and you'll give them a free estimate. But anyways, all jokes aside, that's very, very good. And uh, this kind of math or this type of math problem is a practical math type of uh, situation. This is something that you know a lot of you probably already kind of do on you know some sort of basis you know, if you're doing some sort of project around your home you know math is designed to solve problems to get you know answers to questions that we want to know like how much does something cost so this is a good little example of something like you know business math practical math consumer math so again the application of math is to solve problems and quite frequently we solve a lot of financial problems okay or at least we get the answers to financial questions by using mathematics okay so uh this problem is not that difficult but i did have to emphasize that we are dealing with a rectangular floor. So that uh, aspect is pretty important to this problem. And let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Okay, so first things first, first we are dealing with a math word problem. So always uh, use the rule of three, which is to read the problem at least three times before you start taking action. Now, of course, uh, you know, I've already read the problem a couple times here and kind of, um, you know, hopefully clarified any confusion. But uh, if, you know, the first time you see a problem, you know, you read it, the worst thing you can do is just start doing stuff. You let, you know, your brain uh, catch up to where you're at. You know, our brains, our muscles, you know, kind of have to give it a chance to start thinking. And you there's something in teaching called uh, wait time, all right? Wait time, I can't even spell that, right? So. Here is how that works. And this is what you should use for your brain. So wait time would be the following. So let's suppose um, I ask you, uh, I say, uh, okay, Bob, let's, I'm gonna call upon you. Let's say you're a student in my class. I say, Bob, uh, what concept are we going to be using in this problem? Now, I don't want you to answer me just yet. I want you to think about it for 
at least five seconds. So I'm forcing Bob not to just give me an impulsive answer, to just kind of blurt something out. So this concept is called wait time in teaching, okay? It's uh, an instructional tool, and it's an excellent tool because, you know, it gives Bob a chance to, to think about this, right? And you need to do the same thing with your brain, right? So, all right, I, I know what to do, but let me just think about it. Anyways, I kind of uh, really emphasize this a lot in my videos because if you are trying to get better, that's solving math problems and you're not following this rule, you're going to uh, do yourself a disservice. Okay, so the next thing we want to do in any problem is try to model the situation or visualize it. If you can visualize it, you know, in other words, create some sort of picture out of the uh, situation, well, that's fantastic because a picture is worth a thousand words. And if you can see the problem, oftentimes you can see the solution much easier and of course we are dealing with a visual situation where we can actually sketch out what's going on so let's go ahead and sketch out the problem so we have this rectangular uh, floor that's 20 foot by 40 foot right so this is the dimension and we are dealing with a rectangle so in other words this side over here is 20 and so is this side this is uh, 40 and so is uh, this side okay and of course the angles are 90 degrees but uh, this is going to come into play here in a second when we actually start doing some calculations but in the problem it says that three-fourths of this floor has tiles at two dollars per square foot and the uh, uh, the remaining one fourth has tile at three uh, tiles at three dollars per square foot so you know you can kind of create all kind of different graphical sketches of the situation and this is the fun part of math you know it's kind of uh, creative right so your sketch doesn't have to look like mine but you know put the details of the problem uh, so you can visually look at the problem and say okay what do i need to do here to figure out the cost all right so three-fourths of this floor um, the tiles are going to be two dollars per square foot and one-fourth of this floor it's going to be uh, three dollars per square foot so how can we figure this out all right, so if we kind of think about uh, this problem right here, $3 per square foot or $2 per square foot, what does that mean? Well, it means the following. Okay, let's kind of go over here. So here, let's say, is a square foot, right? So we might put this right here in our, co our corner. So this is one foot by one foot. This is what we call a square foot. Now, actually, let's kind of look at the math of this. So one foot here and one foot here. Now. Uh, let's kind of state this again, one square foot. We're talking about a square, okay? So what's the area of a square? Well, it's the side times the side. So the area of one square foot is one times one or one, uh, and we're multiplying feet. So it's gonna be one foot squared or one square foot, all right? So we need to be really clear about this. Uh, and so we have these tiles, square tiles, and of course they're one by one, so that's one square foot. So we can kind of just imagine, all right, we have all these tiles in here, and these tiles are gonna be different from these tiles, and they're gonna cost a different amount as well. Okay, so how can we uh, figure this problem out? Well, we need to uh, kind of use a concept here, and that concept is going to be area. We need to figure out how many tiles, one uh, foot tiles are going to be in here and uh, how many one foot tiles are going to be in here. And then of course we'll multiply those amount of tiles by, by the cost per square foot for that tile, okay? So we're, uh, really what we're doing is uh, this is a an area problem, okay? So we need to think in terms of area. Okay, so we are dealing with feet, all right? So we're lucky that our unit of measure is already in feet. So this is 40 square feet, right? So we would have 40 tiles running this way and 20 tiles running this way okay all right so let's go ahead and actually calculate the square footage of this uh, the total floor and then we can kind of break down uh, uh, this into its component parts in terms of uh, the two dollar uh, per square foot and the three dollar per square foot okay so 20 by 40 feet a total square feet in here is going to be what well we're talking about the area of a rectangle and the area of a rectangle is the formula is the length times the width and hopefully you knew that so the length is 40 feet and the width is 20 feet so let's go ahead and um, do this basic calculation so 40 times 20 is 800 right so 40 times 20 800 but feet times feet again is going to be what feet squared right so 
uh, when we're talking about area, we're always using we always use units of measure uh, squared. So units squared for area. How about volume? Okay, what would volume be? So in other words, what if we had like a little shoebox or something like this, and we wanted to know how much water we could put in that shoebox for whatever crazy reason? Well, volume would be what? Well, we're going to multiply this by this by this. So if this was feet, feet, and feet, we'd end up with uh, units uh, cubed. Okay, units cubed. So cubic, like feet cubed or centimeters cubed, this is uh, a unit of measure for volume. And uh, units uh, squared, like feet squared, is a unit of measure for area. And I emphasize this because a lot of uh, students or a lot of people kind of dismiss this as like a trivial little annoying detail they don't want to bother with. But listen, you have to be super mindful of the units of measure when you're doing problems like this. Anytime there's units of measure involved in problems, oftentimes you may have to do some conversion and you, you just have to be really good at... Um, working with units of measure. Okay, so the total square feet in our lovely rectangular uh, floor here is 800 square feet or feet squared. Okay, so now we can go ahead and break this down and start, um, you know, kind of looking at the two parts of the floor. So three-fourths of this floor, of this 800 square foot floor is going to be at uh, $2 uh, per tile, right? $2 per square foot. So how many square feet are in here. Well, there's a couple different ways we can kind of uh, calculate this, but the easiest way by far is just, just to take this three-fourths and multiply it by 800. Okay, so three-fourths of the entire floor is, and of course the entire floor is 800 square feet, is going to be at $2 per tile. So let's figure out what three-fourths of the 800 is equal to. Okay, so three-fourths of 800 is what? Well, just take three-fourths and multiply it by 800. So 4 goes into 800, 200. So 200 times 3, of course, is 600. So 600 square feet. So if the total floor is 800 square feet and 3 fourths of, of the floor, uh, you know, is at a certain cost, well, well, how many square feet is 3 fourths of a floor where the total floor is 800? Well, it's 3 fourths times 800 or 600 square feet. Okay, so let's go ahead and break this down a step further. Again, practicing units of measure. So now we know that 600 square feet, or uh, and of course, again, I'm using this term square feet, right? So what is that? A square foot, it is a foot squared. Okay, so they're interchangeable, uh, square foot and foot squared. They mean the same thing. So 600 square feet or 600 feet squared, we're gonna multiply that by the, uh, the cost of the tile per square foot. Okay, so it's $2 per uh, square foot or one square foot. Now I've kind of broke this down this way so you can see what happens with our units of measure. The feet squared cross cancel uh, and I'm left with dollars as the unit of measure. So 600 times 2 of course is 1200. So uh, we're talking about $1200 to tile 600 square feet at $2 per square foot. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And a lot of you could probably just do this real quickly, um, you know, uh, but I suspect a lot of you um, in terms of working with the units of measure, you know, might, might uh, need a quick little review and hopefully this kind of clarifies stuff. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel before we finish this problem up. You know, uh, I love uh, teaching mathematics. And I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years and uh, really um, uh, very active, let's say, in the last three years. And uh, I've posted well over 2,500 uh, videos from basic math to advanced math because I just love teaching at all levels of math. Math is a journey. Okay? It's a process. It never ends. So it's all relative, right? It's like, hey, if you are here in math, basic math, well, that's where you're at on this journey. If you're in algebra or trigonometry or calculus, it's a journey. And even you know, professional mathematicians, you know, they just not, they just don't stop learning. It's not like you finish, oh, I learned all math and that's that. And so if some of you think that, oh, once you've learned calculus, you are done. Well, actually, calculus is just, you know, it's just starting to get fun after calculus in terms of advanced mathematics and it never ends. So I love to try to teach as much math and different types of math to all of you out there because I want to, uh, you know, support you in terms of getting better at math. And if you like my teaching style, well then I'm gonna to continue to produce videos, but I need your help. I need you to support 
my work so I can reach as many people as possible. And the easiest way to do that is to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, you might as well hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. So thanks for giving me a little bit of time uh, to tell you why I do, why I do, or what to do what I do. That's a better way of saying it. So let's get back to this problem. And this is not going to be that difficult. Most of you are like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know what you're going to do. And uh, so our total floor here, again, is 800 square feet. And three-fourths of this floor, which was 600 square feet at $2 a tile, is going to cost us $1,200. So how many square feet do we have left over here? Well, if we have 600 square feet here and 800 square feet in total, well, it's probably a good idea that we just subtract these two to figure out how many square feet are here. So it's 200 feet squared. But one-fourth of the floor of this 800 square foot floor is... Uh, the tiles are going to cost us three dollars per square foot but you know we know the answer is 200 square feet because it's the difference there's 600 square foot here and there's a total of 800 well it's got to be the difference between these two so it's 200 square feet but let's just go ahead and calculate this out anyways so one fourth of 800 is what well one fourth of 800 four goes into 800 uh 200 so one times 200 is 200 so 200 square feet that's one fourth of a 800 square foot floor. So again, we're gonna take that 200 uh, square foot uh, or foot squared and multiply it by $3 per square foot. Again, our feet across cancel, we're left with dollars. So this is going to be 200 times three, which of course is $600. All right, so now this becomes quite easy. So figuring this out, we figured out this part of the floor was $1,200, this part of the floor uh, at $3 per tile, it was $600. 1200 plus 600 is $1,800. Okay, so that is that. Again, you, you can kind of classify this as, you know, just basic practical math or everyday math. A lot of you out there um, are actually may, may be in the trades, uh, uh, you know, like construction, uh, electrician, uh, HVAC, which is, you know, um, uh, air conditioning, refrigeration, that kind of stuff. There is a lot of math, a lot of practical math out there. And quite frankly, uh, some of those um, folks or some of you folks out there that work in the trades are very good with working with numbers because you work with numbers all the time. That's an, uh, you know very impressive. So I'll tell you, it doesn't make a difference in terms of where math can benefit. Uh, you don't have to go to college. You don't have to be an engineer to need math. You could be in the trades and use you know practical math every day. The bottom line is this, the more math you know, the better off you're going to be. Now, if you want to learn more math, uh, let's say in this particular problem, we're talking about surface area and area. Let me give you a couple quick suggestions. One, first of all, let me just say I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. But uh, first of all, I teach basic geometry uh, concepts in my pre-algebra course. Uh, now, if you happen to be in full geometry, I have a full geometry course. You can find, you can find links to all these courses in the description uh, of this video. But if you are not a math student, you're like, boy, you know, I'd like to kind of, you know, improve or maybe relearn or rebuild your math skills. Well, check out my math skill rebuilder course, right? On this course, I teach you basic math. I teach you a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry to include a lot of the stuff that we're talking about here. I even teach you basic trigonometry and basic probability and statistics. All my courses are self-paced, but they're designed to really, you know, try to uh, teach math in a way you like and understand. So if you're interested in, in that course, you again, you can find a link to all these courses, uh, the links um, in the description. But hopefully this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.